and good riddance to bad rubbish. Mr. Jimson, it's me, Nosey. Don't you remember me? No, I don't. But you must, Mr. Jimson. You've only been inside a month. I looked after all your things, Mr. Jimson, while you were in pre... pre... jail. They broke all the windows, but I boarded them up. The picture's all right, Mr. Jimson, except for some bullet holes. Go away, Scram. I led weights to your feet, fireworks in your hair, kiss your mother goodbye and jump in the river. I don't know you. I don't want to know you. Buzz off. Explode. You're not well, Mr. Jimson. I want to help you. You're, you're a genius. Everyone says so. You must let me help you and learn from you. You again? What now? Oh, officer, I'm being menaced by a dangerous youth. He thinks I'm Michelangelo or Rembrandt or Van Gogh or Picasso. I'd be safer inside. Take me back. Take you back? Not in a thousand years. I'll paint you a great wall. The most exciting and beautiful thing you've ever seen. Don't think the governor would approve. Well, then lock up this dreadful youth. You'd better get out of the police. Now see what you've done. Got me locked out for life. I am sorry, Mr. Jimson. I only want to help. I, I want to see you a citizen recognized by society. Look, I've saved three in a tanner for you from my paper round. Keep it. No, Mr. Jimson, you mustn't. Not that again. Artery and threats down the telephone and filthy words. That's what landed you in trouble before, Mr. Jimson. You mustn't do it. I shan't let you. I've only popped in to press button B. Never miss an opportunity of pressing button B. Um, do you really want to help me, Nosy? Of course I do, Mr. Jimson. Well, add one and five minutes to that and give me some cigarettes. If I do, you promise you won't phone Mr. Hickson? I promise. I never know when I can trust you. You're a good boy, Nosey. You'll never be a great artist, but you're a good boy. Give me some cigarettes. Hey, Mr. Jimson! My bike! Bring it back! My bike! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! Stop thief! No, no, no. It's all right. He's he's not a thief. He's a friend of mine. You start yelling stop thief at innocent people. Oh, I never did. And I... you'll find yourself in hot water. And I'll be off with you and pull your socks up. It's a real foot. No one ever painted a foot like that before. It's a leggy leg, all right. But that leg could talk, it would say. I walk for you. I run for you. I kneel for you. But I keep myself respect. That's it. That's where it went wrong. A white eye, that's the feel of it.
Hickson's house? Hello? Uh, may I speak to Mr. Hickson, please? Who shall I say? The president of the Royal Academy. Will you please hold the lights? Telephone, sir. The president of the Royal Academy. Hickson speaking. This is the president of the Royal Academy. I understand you are in possession of... He's out again, Robert. Stand by the other phone. We may need the police. Hello, hello. Are you there? Is that you, Jimson? Oh, certainly not. I wouldn't touch the fellow with a dung fork. But Mr. Jimson is destitute. If Mr. Jimson is destitute, it's entirely his own fault. And he will accept your personal check for 250 pounds. I'm sure he would. But I don't owe him anything. If this check's not in Mr. Jimson's hands by tomorrow morning, he fully intends to burn your house down and cut your tripes out. Hickson's house? This is the Duchess of Blackpool. I wish to speak to Mr. Hick. One moment, Your Grace. Who is it now? The Duchess of Blackpool, sir. Get the police and have the call traced. I took the liberty of doing that on the previous call, sir. He should be intercepted at any moment. Yes. This is Her Grace, the Duchess of Blackpool. Can you hear me? Very clearly indeed. Dear Mr. Hick, I am the chairwoman of the Gully Jimson Mural Committee. We have got to raise five thousand pounds. Uh, to carry out his three great projects for the nation. The fall of the man, uh, the raising of Lazarus, and the last judgment. Mr. Jimson? Uh, no, that's my first cousin, once removed, an artist who's always getting into trouble with the police. He just went up the road. Shall I call him back? Have you just sent a telephone message of a threatening character to Mr. Hickson of Portland Place? I only said I'd burn his house down and cut his liver out. Now, look, he doesn't want to prosecute, but if you go on making a nuisance of yourself, well, he's going to have to take steps. Would he rather I cut his liver out without phoning? Now, come now, Mr. Jimson. I mean, put yourself in his place. I wish I could. It's a very nice place. Just a minute. Do it again. And you're for it. That's better. A good bash and you get what you want out of life. That's been my experience. Now, what was it? The usual. They tried religion on me as soon as they saw what I was going to look like. They always tried on the flatfoot squaws, but I had my pride. It's not fair of God to make a girl and give her a face like mine. No religion for Koki. I'm a primitive myself, but I'm not one of the strict ones. Now, my missus is a peculiar. She is strict. Wind shifted. Gone round to the east. Any messages for me? Letters, parcels, invitations. Proper nipping that breeze. Red noses tomorrow. So you're out. I thought it was Friday. A nice fool you made of yourself uttering menaces at your age. Oh, I got a mistake, Koki. Half a mile. I got thinking how I'd been done and it made me mad. You were lucky to get off with a month. I rang him again this morning, wanted to give him a little fright. I suppose you're proud of yourself. I put it on the slate, Cokie, and lend me 50 quid. Don't be silly. I'll make it 40, then. I've got to get back to work. What about the four pounds, nine and six you already owe me? I've not been in a position to earn it, Cokie. You never are. My boy is in a good position. Ten pounds a week at the gas works. 
Not like me daughter, she's deaf, runs in the family. Look, we'll do a deal, Cokie. Let me 32, Bob, add on the price of the beer, and we'll say that I owe you six quid. Not bloody likely. I've got security. I've heard that before, too. Same again, miss, please. Cross me hard. Listen to this. It's the girls that get it, not the boys. The boys have ears like water rats. I'd rather be blind than deaf. Not that I haven't had enough trouble with my earache. Dear Gully Jimson, you will excuse, I hope, my temerity in writing to you. Well, read it yourself. Who's it from? A.W. Alabaster. Secretary to Sir William Beter, the millionaire. Uh, Sir William wants to buy some of my early works. Go on, read it. I'd rather be deaf myself. I likes to see the world. You can do without the talk. Shut up. Shut up. They are extremely... He's a millionaire, Koki. You can trust him. All that letter's worth 15 bob. Come on, I've got to get paints. What are you going to do about this? I haven't time to do anything about it. Sir William Beter offers you 500 pounds for one of your early pictures and you haven't got time to do anything about it? I haven't got the pictures, Koki. When Sal left me, she took them with her. Where? My old friend, Hickson. She ought to be hung on oaks. Where are you been all the day, Billy boy, Billy boy? Where are you been all the day, my Billy boy? You and me's going to pay a little call on Mrs. Jimson. Oh, she's Mrs. Monday now, Cookie. Whatever she calls herself, she's not going to make a fool out of you and she's not going to make a fool out of me. I want my four pounds, nine and six, and we'll go tomorrow morning. You can keep the rest of the 500. Suits me. Can you let me have five bob on a car? <laughs> and me Nancy tickled me fancy, oh me darling Billy boy. Disgusting, I call it. How did you get in? Through the hatch. It's disgusting what they've done to your picture, Mr. Jimson. They've ruined it. I can patch it. It's the little air gun holes that are the nuisance. They've written names all over Eve, Mr. Jimson. Mr. Jimson's just gone out. He saw you coming. I brought you some coffee and sausage rolls. Don't they ever give you any homework? It's the holidays. If you want to get that scholarship and go to Oxford and get into the civil service and be a great man and have 2,000 pounds a year and a nice wife and a kid with real eyes and open and shut, go home and work. It's nice and hot, Mr. Jimson. There's sugar in it. Mr. Jimson won't be back for some time. I'll drink it for him. Now go home. be an artist. I want you to help me. Of course you want to be an artist. Everybody does once. But they get over it. Like measles and chicken pox. But they have to be artists. And lunatics too. But why go and live in an asylum before you're sent for? I don't want to bother you, Mr. Jimson. But I don't know any other real artists. I'll tell you a secret. Jimson never was an artist. You know what the critics said about him in the 1920s? They said he was a nasty young man who tried to advertise himself by painting and drawing like a child of six, and since then he's got worse. But they always say that, don't they? Well, sometimes they're right. Now, uh, Jimson's papa was a real artist. He painted noses in the right place. He got into the academy, he worked 16 hours a day for 50 years, and died a pauper. But he went on painting. You're mad, you're deaf, you're out of your mind! You're out of your mind, you're out of your mind! Go and do something sensible, like shooting yourself! But don't be an artist! Okay. 
circulars, no circulars. Beware of the dog. A fine old mess. I tried putting in little white fish, but that wouldn't work. You ready? For what? That ex-wife of yours. I'm busy. You put that down and come with me. Tomorrow, Cookie. Some other time. Oh, look at Adam's old knob of a shoulder. Like a lump of meat. Call that a man, I call it a dwarf. What'd you do it with, Egg? No, it's got to be today. I've got the morning off on purpose. Come on, get your hat on. Sarah Monday, X and Beda, and my four pounds, 14 and six. I admire you, Cokie. Obstinate as a mule, aren't you? Yes. So, Sarah Monday. Where did you pick her up? Is there a place for these models, or did you pick her up off the street? Oh, she wasn't a model, and I didn't pick her up. She was a married woman, and she picked me up. Disgusting. Oh, a regular man-eater, Sarah, when I first knew her. Just getting up in the 30s, and full blast on all cylinders. Don't tell me about her. I can see her. Which house is it? Oh, search me. But I bet you five bob is the one with the brightest polished door knob. Dickie? Great Scott. Dickie? It's the old dreadnought herself. Why? It's not you, girlie. No, I'm Mr. Foster from Gloucester. Well, isn't that nice? You haven't seen a little boy with a ginger moustache coming along the street. You might have heard him cough. Excuse me, Mrs. Mundy. I'm Miss D. Coker, a friend of Mr. Jimson's, and we want a few words with you and not in the street, if you please. Certainly, Miss D. Coker. Please come inside. Excuse things as they are, but I wasn't expecting visitors so early. And I never expected to see you, Gully. Gave me quite a turn. D do sit down. Excuse me. Dickie? I don't want any tricks from you. Excuse me being so rude, but I'm so worried about my little boy. My husband's little boy, I should say. We came on business. We'll stick to that if you don't mind. That's right. I'll just see how the kettle is. Don't sit down, Mr. Jimson. If you sit down in her house, it'll all come out against us in court if we have any trouble. I know her sort. You don't know Sarah, Cokie. She's got better tricks than that. Oh, dear. I get so short of breath since I had flu. Excuse me leaving you like that, Miss Coker. Kettle won't be a moment. Then we can have some tea. Do sit down. We've come about the pictures painted by Mr. Jimson here that you sold to Mr. Exon. That's right, Miss Coker. Well, I don't call it right. I call it robbery. That's right. Why, Gully, it's a real pleasure. Of course, Mr. Hickson said the pictures weren't properly finished, and we owed a lot of money all round. Then Mr. Jimson left me, and I, I didn't know when he was coming back. And of course, when Mr. Hickson said he'd pay all the debts, I was in such a whirl, I, I didn't know how to say no. And you didn't think my picture's worth tuppence anyway? Oh, yes, Gully. I always thought you were a lovely artist. It's just like old times. How well you look. Oh, come off it, Sal. We're both tottering into the grave. Oh, you may well say that of me, Gully. But he doesn't look a day older. What a pity my husband's on duty this morning. He would like to have seen you. You old fool. Why don't you stand up to her? She's twisting you around her little finger. Not me. I know her game. Not but what you can't get right down in the dirt if you want. But I don't care. As long as I get the evidence she stole those pictures and I get my four pounds, 14 and six. Excuse me, Miss Coker, offering your cake with a slice out. But the truth is, little Dickie keeps pestering me, poor mite. And he's got such a bad cough, I just gave him a piece. I notice you keep off the subject of Mr. Jimson's pictures. That's right. Well, will you sign a paper to say that Mr. Jimson didn't ought to have been swindled out of his legal property? That's right. Oh, dear, no sugar. I can't get over seeing you again. Ah! Dickie? 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 Excuse me, Miss Coker. I could have sworn I heard Dickie cough just now. And how are the paintings going, Gally? Nicely? And how are your poor legs? Bent. 
Well, now you really, sir. I can see Mr. Watson's name and present owner Monday takes good care of valuable property. As we came on business, perhaps we'd better get on with it. There were 19 canvases and 300 drawings. No, there were only 18. Where's the other one? I don't know. I never could find it. It must have got lost. It wasn't the one you liked so much. Of yourself on the bed. You were always taking a peep at it. Admiring yourself in your skin. Well, I must say I never had any trouble with my skin. Like some people. Oh! oh thought I was bitten. You. Excuse me, Miss Coker. You'll never know the trouble we have in these nasty little houses. Keeping them up the furniture. Sign here, Mrs. Mundy. We've wasted enough time. Oh, you brought a pen. How thoughtful of you. I was worried about not having a proper pen. You're signing for 19 pictures and you only gave Hicks an 18. That's right. You don't care what you sign, do you? You've always got something up your sleeve. That's right. Thank you, Mrs. Mundy. That's all we require. Come on, Mr. Jimson. We're off to Mr. Dixon. Dixon? Oh, no, Cookie. Not this morning. I've had enough. I'm not interested. Maybe you're not, but I am. And you've got that millionaire to see. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, there you are. This is Dickie. Where have you been, you bad boy? Say, how do you do to the gentleman? This is Mr. Jimson. He's an artist. Since when? You've never seen a real artist before, have you? You've got the right idea, son. Why don't you bite me? That's the way you treat strangers. Make them respect you. Are you coming or are you not? No, I'm not. You'll get a crack from me if you don't. I hope she looks after you properly, Gully. She? She doesn't look after me. I'm me old man. Are you coming or am I going? Goodbye, Gully. You look so young, I... I can't get over it. Ta-ta. Well, if I said I was surprised at you, Mr. Jimson, it wouldn't be true. I see too many dirty old men, and some of them didn't know better, but pinching. It was only a howdy-do. With an old acquaintance, I, I, you're my steady. Not me. I'm nobody's steady but my own. Miss D. Coker, Mr. G. Jimson, to see Mr. Hickson on business. I will inquire if Mr. Hickson is at home. You please come this way. I should have phoned to see if he was in. Hickson doesn't put much faith in the telephone. Wait here, please. Who was that? Hickson's man, always in a dark suit. Well, how could I tell he wasn't a gentleman? You're not meant to, first time. Look at this. I pity the poor girl that's got to dust this lot. Chunky work, but look at the detail. Nice place. Nice staff. Keeps it nice, too. Come here, Koki. Where's your Rubens now? Or your Renoir? Who did it? I did. It's not that Sarah. Well, what's the matter who it is? How could she show herself like that? It's such a lump, too. It's disgraceful. It's a work of genius, Koki. It's worth 50,000 pounds. It's worth anything you like. Because it's unique. And Hickey's clever enough to know it. Oh, now this old stuff's worn to shreds. He wants a nice bit of chintz on that. Look at my picture, Cokie. I saw it once. You didn't think about it. I know if it was a postcard and some poor chap tried to sell it, it'd get 14 days. You're missing a big slice of life, Cokie. Half a minute of revelations worth a million years of no nothing. Who lives a million years? A million people every 12 months. I'll show you how to look at a picture. Don't look at it. Feel it with your eyes. First feel the shapes in the flat, like patterns. Then feel it in the round. Feel all the smooth and sharp edges, the lights and the shades, 
the cools and the warms. Ah, oh, the jugs look real. I'll give you that. I'll feel the chair, the bathtub, the woman. Not any old tub or woman, but the tub of tubs and woman of women. I suppose there's some sense in it. Oh, I know you're clever. Do you think I'd have any patience with you if you weren't? I'd shove you in the first dustbin. I'm trying to teach you something. What? A great happiness. Looking at a big fat totty in a bathtub. Do you think I'm a dirty old man? Jemson, I don't know what you've come for, but if you and this lady intend to make trouble... Oh, then... no, Hickey. Coker's very law-abiding. She has an artistic way of expressing herself, that's all. Uh, Miss Coker, Mr. Hickson. Pleased to meet you, sir. Mr. Hickson, this morning, me and Mr. Please Jemson... Please sit down. Well, this morning, me and Mr. Jimson called at the house of Mrs. Jimson, that was and now calls herself Mrs. Monday. Miss Coker, Jimson owed me a large sum of money, some 400 pounds. Mrs. Jimson offered me 18 canvases in settlement of this debt. I accepted her offer. Oh, as I understand it, there were 19. Well, Mrs. Jimson, oh, I beg her pardon, Mrs. Monday, kept one for herself for sentimental reasons. Did you hear that, Mr. Jimson? I heard. Now you had 18 pictures for 400 pounds, and that one's worth 50,000 pounds by itself. Hardly. Perhaps someday. All I can say is that I wouldn't take 5,000 for it. Well, it's barefaced robbery. Mr. Jimson, where are you? Improving myself. Appreciating the rare and the beautiful. Well, come here at once. Madam, I don't think you quite understand the position. In all, Jimson has had some 3,000 pounds from me. Apart from various loans, I have given him two pounds a week without any obligation whatever for some considerable time. You old fraud. 3,000 pounds and you said he'd robbed you. That's what you said, Cokie. What I said was that he got my pictures cheap. You've been telling a lot of lies and borrowing money under false pretenses. Please, please, don't let's have any argument. I'm quite prepared to resume Jimson's allowance, provided that he promises not to ring me up. I'm an old man, Jimson, and I don't very much mind if you murder me. But I cannot stand all this telephoning. It upsets the servants and they give notice. I hadn't thought of that. I must have servants. I'm used to them and I can afford to pay for them. And they probably wouldn't mind working here if it wasn't for you. May I have a word with you, sir? In private. It's rather urgent. Oh, certainly, Robert. Excuse me a moment. What's going on? It's a conference between master and man. They're deciding who does the work. He's telephoning. Have you been up to anything in there? What have you got in your pockets? I thought you looked a bit bulgy. You'll go to Chokey for years this time, my lad, and I won't be sorry. Come on out with them, quick. Why all the fuss? Hickey doesn't appreciate the stuff anyway. Don't be silly. That butler's onto it already. What's this? I've seen her before. Oh, I'll give you a good big punch for this. I'm not going to be seen with a thief. It's the police he's onto. I don't believe that. It's the police, I tell you. <coughs> Shh. You hear anything? Shh, sir. I can't hear a thing. Well, I can. It's the police car. Oh, that treacherous old crocodile. Starving an artist to death. No, no, no! The police, Roberts. Let them in. I don't see why they have to break the window.
kitchen, Roberts. The kitchen. The passage. And I'm giving a month's notice. St. George's Hospital. I'm not going through with it, Mr. Jimson. There's nothing the matter with me. Pay no attention, gentlemen. She's a little overwrought. Hey, driver. Don't fool with the man at the wheel. If you two have been up to any hanky-panky, we'll call the police. She's not a girl for hanky-panky, I assure you. And the police know all about us, don't they, Gladys? Oh, I've had enough. Here's your letter. You go and see your millionaire on your own. And don't forget the money you owe me. And send it registered. I don't want to see you again, ever. Shock treatment, that's what she wants. Oh, excuse me. Sir William and Lady Beda, Chatfield Court. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, we passed it. At every space as small as a globule of man's blood, uh, such as this we now occupy, opens into eternity. I quote from old man Blake. Are you sure Sir William and Lady Beater are expecting you? Expecting me? They're down on their knees praying for me. Top floor. Six B, on the left. What are you waiting for? Think I'm going to walk off with the door? I beg your pardon. I thought I heard the bell. Uh, are you the butler here? Oh, hardly. I'm Sir William Beda's secretary. What can I do for you? Are you lost? No. Now, don't tell me I'm psychic. You are A.W. Alabaster, the very man I want. You have the advantage of me. I'm Gully Jimson, the world-renowned painter. Mr. Jimson, forgive me. I should have recognized you. Yes, I'm Alabaster. Do come in. Uh, it's all right, Hodges. You understand, we do have to be a little careful. Let me take your hat. What is it, Mr. Jimson? Are you unwell? That wall. Uh, it's rather bare, I'm afraid. Lady Bede has just had a tapestry removed for renovation. That's the wall I want. I've dreamt of a wall like that. I see it. I see it. The raising of Lazarus. A yellow pair of feet, long and stringy. A black pair, huge and strong. A child's feet, pink with nails like polished coral. An old pair with knobbly toes curled into the dust. I'm afraid Lady Beater... Oh, Lady Beater down in this corner, in the nude, laughing with pleasure. Sir William... Sir William down there, dead drunk, asleep, unaware of the miracle that's taking place. Sir William and Lady Beater are out. They'll be back shortly. It would be great, Alabaster. Of course, Mr. Jimson. Do let me give you some tea. The servants are down in Dorset. Or perhaps you prefer something stronger. Brandy. And it's lucky you're dropping in like this today. The beaders leave for Jamaica tomorrow morning and I go with them. Six weeks of sunshine. I take it you have a picture for them. They'll be delighted. How much will they pay for this delight? Uh, well, that depends, of course. Well, in your letter you said they'd pay handsomely. Well, I'm sure they will for the right picture. Uh, something similar in style, perhaps, to the woman in the bath. They've always admired it so much. Friends of Hickson's, are they? They dine together almost every week. The world is too small, Professor. But I know where I can find another picture of mine, of Sal, uh, the lady in the bath. Sir William will be thrilled. And I'll only ask 7,000 for it. Uh, well, they're great patrons of the arts, but they might think that a bit steep. Millionaires, aren't they? If they want culture, they pay. My dear Mr. Jimson, Sir William and Lady Flora are most cultured people. Oh, I bet they are. Who are the most enlightened people in the world, the rich? I love millionaires. 7,000's my price. But I'll tell you what. I'll paint this wall, 
and throw it in, free, gratis, and for nothing. A raising of Lazarus that will make your hair stand oh, on thank end. Thank goodness that's that. We've done our last minute shopping and we're dead. Good afternoon. Uh, Lady Beda, uh, this is Mr. Gully Jimson. You remember you instructed me to write to Mr. Jimson about a painting. He's just called. How do you do? Enchanté. Sir William, Mr. Jimson. How do you How do? How do you do? We are most honoured, Mr. Jimson, I assure you. Your ladyship, I saw you in the nude, squatting down by that wall, laughing merrily. But now I see you clothed rather foolishly, clasping a cornucopia from which you're distributing useless gifts to the poor. Mr. Jimson's been telling me of his unusual ideas for a wall paint. Uh, that wall. Oh, yes, well, it was a picture we wanted from you, Mr. Jimson. Something quite small that we could hang in our country house. You shall have both. Oh, I'm sure that might be delightful. But you see, we are just off for our winter holiday, flying tomorrow morning. And I really don't think we can come to any decision before we are back. Uh, Mr. Jimson has a picture. Oh, how exciting. I see you have finished your drink. Arnold, the glass. Yes, well, now we could see it, no doubt, on our return. I'm not sure about that. The Archbishop of Canterbury is most anxious to have it. Uh, Lady Beda, uh, Lady Flora. I think you and Sir William, uh, Sir Willie, uh, Sir Bob, are two of the nicest people I've ever met, and I shan't hesitate to diddle the Archbishop. You shall have the picture. I think we'd better leave details until much later. Well, I think that's simply enchanting of you. We're very fond of artists, you know, my husband and I. Uh, my wife does a little painting herself. Oh, William, you shouldn't say such a thing in front of a professional artist. Nonsense, my dear. I'm sure Jimson would love to see your stuff. He may give you a few tips. A touch more of the three-star, Professor. Uh, don't you think, Sir William, it'd be better to wait for a proper session when there's plenty of time and light? Oh, of course. We have no right to impose uh, on Mr. Jimson. Arnold, get Lady Flora's portfolio. Poor Mr. Jimson, you will be quite dreadfully bored, I fear. William, I think I need a little fortification. Oh, good idea. I think I'll have one too. How about uh, you? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, everything about you, Lady B, gives me confidence. Uh, I know I'm going to like your pictures. <coughs> uh, <coughs> amateurs um, <coughs> uh, do much the most interesting work. Lovely. Only once a title. I think the sky is not too bad. Charmant. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Of course, the sky is just a little bit chancy. Just a little bit accidental. Like when the cat spills its breakfast. I think I see what you mean. Well, you know, you get skies like that in Dorset. This artificial light's rather misleading. A typical Dorset sky, that's my point. Pure accident. Oh. And just look at the wriggle of the mast on the water. That's technique. <laughs> well, my wife has made a special study of watercolour technique. Oh, William, you'll have Mr. Jimson laughing at me. All you've got to do now, having mastered this technique, is to forget it, kick your heels and blow it through the keyhole. Oh, I do see what you mean. You mean that mere cleverness can be dangerous. The kiss of death. <laughs> All this is very clever, pretty, pretty, but is it worth it? Ask yourself. Use your loaf. Do some thinking. But don't you think... Of course, I'm not a professional. A good thing, too, my dear. Don't you think that the intellectual approach can be dangerous, too, Mr. Jimson? Ha, <laughs> ha, uh, Listen to them, Alabaster. The poor dears. The poor so-and-sos. What do you think I've been doing all my life? Playing tiddlywinks with little Freddy's color box. More brandy, Professor. And help yourselves. Let's get stinking. I'll tell you something. Straight from the horse's mouth. You have to know when you succeed and when you fail and why. Know thyself, in fact. In short, you have to think. Yes, we're all very privileged, I'm sure. How about your packing, Lady Beda? A good idea. Packing? You talk of packing at a time like this when we're getting down to fundamentals. <laughs> Now you're talking. You should meet Mrs. Morton Grange Waring. She's always down to fundamentals, isn't she, William? She has the flat immediately below us. Then call her up. 
Let's have a party. That is impossible, I'm glad to say. He's gone to Java to study the dog. Ah, hey. I have news for you. I'm going to be just a little bit ill. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just going to sleep here. I fear you can't do that. I'll drive you home, Mr. Uh, Jones. My London house is shut up for the winter. And my aunt has gone sing sing uh, to study the electric chair. I shall sleep here. But there are only two beds, ours and Arnold's. Lovely. Well, Bob, Bobby will sleep with Al, and I will turn in with you. Uh, I'm 50-odd, well, call it 60-odd. No, 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 come here, come here, come here. So it's unlikely you'll be um, inconvenienced. Oh, oh, heavens. Well, William, what's the situation? What are you going to do? What? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll push him out in the passage and uh, Alabaster can get Hodges to drive him home. Oh, William, that's out of the question. Oh, Mr. Jimson, he's ill. We really must look after him. We'll put him to bed in your room, Arnold. What? Oh, really, Flora. And you could spend the night on the sofa. Good morning. Beater's gone. Hours ago. Oh, didn't they tell you I was here? They left a message. What time is it? Past eleven. You going now? I am. For how long? Six weeks. Better leave me the key. Message says, give key to Porter. Oh, Lady Flora was forgetting that I shall need the key. I'll give it to the porter when I've finished. That's not what the message says. I assure you, Sir Bob and Lady Flo would be most upset if they thought you'd left me without the key. There's the wall to paint. I can't see it needs painting. What are your feet like? Why? If they're really old, trampled feet, as I suspect, I'd like to draw them. Draw your own feet. Old women's feet, thin, flat, long, clinging to the ground like reptiles. <laughs> I beg your pardon. If you're leaving now, could I have the key to Sir William's apartment? Mrs. Brace... Mrs. Brace has fled. Her feet had wings. She left the key with me. I know that. I shall be needing the key. I shall be staying here some time. I like the air. Oh, incidentally, uh, my name is Jimson. Uh, Sir Gully Jimson. Oh, I see. O.M. Oh, well, of course, that's different. Oh, it certainly is different. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, if any friends call, send them up. Anyway, sir. Uh, just slipping out for some charcoal. <laughs> Twenty-eight pounds, twelve shillings and sixpence. Thank you. Very fair prices for this time of the year. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I? Certainly, sir. It's a pleasure to handle merchandise like this. Oh, it is, isn't it? One mural, raising of Lazarus, plus Sarah on bed, seven thousand pounds, advance, twenty-eight pounds, twelve shillings and sixpence, balance owing, um, Six thousand nine hundred and seventy-one pounds, seven shillings and sixpence. A face from the distant past. One must be businesslike when dealing with millionaires. 
I don't have much experience in that line, sir. Oh, you will have. What are you trying to say, Nosey? Oh, you still want to be a painter? My uh, better self follows me like a whipped dog. You want to work for me? Make tea. It's the kind of fish you want to throw a brick at, don't you think? Would you mind? Uh, sir, sir, you're joking. Scram! Au revoir. Arrivederci. Hasta la vista. You, you, you won't get rid of me by shouting, Mr. Jimson. Miss Coco told me where to look for you, and, and now I've found you. You really wanted to be useful, Nosey. That's right. Then get me a tiger. Tiger? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Not mine. Did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Apparently. We should have got something live from the zoo. I like it, Mr. Jimson. You like meringues, cream puffs, and candy floss. I'm sorry. I should have learned by now it's easy to offend the faith of the little ones. You don't offend me, Mr. Jimson. But perhaps I'm not such a little one as you imagine. I've got eyes in my head, and I like your tiger. The trouble with you is you're an enthusiast, like my dad. He'd start painting a picture of a girl on a swing and go right on to the shine on the rose thorn and the pollen in the lily, and then lacquer it. Me, I like starting, but I don't like going on. For me, the tiger's dead, and the rest is a blank. What do you see in the blank, Mr. Jimson? A kind of colored music in the mind. A glass green Lazarus, stiff as an ice man. My mother bore me in the southern wild, and I am black. How does it go on? Where's your education? When I from black and he from white cloud free. Freedom, that's it. Freedom from paintbrushes, from fear of yourself. Freedom to do or not to do. Freedom to come and go, as you please. Black, white, yellow, black. But Sir Jimson, sir, he said he wanted to see me. How do I know that? That's what Sir Jimson said, sir. All right. Go on, use the stairs. Top floor, 6B. Sir Jimson said I wasn't to walk, sir, and not to tie my feet. Come on, then. How did you get such feet? What kind of feet, sir? Cheeky feet. I don't know, sir. What you do for a living? I'm a waiter, sir. Ah, so that's it. I don't know what you mean, sir. Salu. Young ho. Yasu. Uegishen. Kampai. Bundio. Skol. You know what would happen if you took off all the waiter's boots? No, sir. Their feet would make such rude remarks, the customers wouldn't be able to enjoy their dinners. Just as you say, sir. I could only get 18 bob for the teapot, Mr. Jimson. You've been robbed. It was a sieve, that fellow at the pork shop's diddling you. So I got some turps, and the yellow ochre, and flake white, two tubes each. That leaves ninepence. Young man, I drink to your gloomy future. We can no longer afford tea and sugar. We are reduced to what was known in my youth as bubbly. Do you want to sign the uh, account book now, Mr. Jimson? You're my auditor, Nosey. The financial situation is your concern. Well, I'm slobbergas. It looks as if I shall have to do you in white.
You've been wearing shoes. My feet are like something out of a medical museum. Everyone wears shoes, Mr. Jimson. I can't help it. Do you want me to answer the door? What door? The bell's ringing, Mr. Jimson. You move your feet, I'll chop them off. Oh. Hey. Oh, no, not you. Remove yourself, Bisson. I heard you'd struck it rich, Jimson. You should have told me. No sculptors for me, thank you. All bash and no brain. Go down any coal mine, Bisson. Take your chisel and dig yourself a hole. Ah, Jimson, that's no way to talk. We're all friends. Share and share alike. That's our motto. That's your motto. Remember the boots I gave you. They were your father's. What's all this nonsense? Papering the wall? Oh, you dog's biscuit! I'm painting a picture. That looks like a lot of feet to me. What a crackpot idea. They'll be putting you away soon. Who are you? I'm lowly. Oh, get down. No, you don't, Bisson. That's mine. Stick out your arm and pull in your wind a bit. Ah, oh, you'll do. Look out, Bisson! You're about to die! That's fine, just about here. You won't be in my way. Ah, she'll come through here very pretty. Get out, you humbugging rock hacker. You're not bringing any of your monumental masonry in here. It's a commission, Jimson. Real money, big stuff. Take my steady now. What do you think you're playing at? Get that rock out of here. Shut up, Jimson. This is tricky. It's all right. The porter's in the red line. We're quite safe. Come on, give me those rollers. Listen, I'm sending for the police. Jimson, will you stop knocking about? This is a serious matter. It's a commission from British Railways. Let me go, you lout. Let go! Let go! Mrs. Morton Green's wearing. She's gone to Java. That's all right, I'll work down there. Not so good, but it'll do. Everything all right, sir? I heard a bump. Must have been an explosion at the gas works. Uh, it gave me a terrible shock, sir. They'll take us not too good. Oh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't bother to come up this far in future. Yeah. Mike. You down there. I'll only 
charge you a pound a week for Mrs. One Lot's flat. Do you hear me? And for another 15 bob, my houseboy will do a little uh, light dusting. Miss Lowley. I've got cramp. I can't put my hand to my mouth. Better try all the same. Irish stew, Mr. Jimson. He hasn't eaten for two days. He won't even speak. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Who cares if the old fool dies of starvation? Chili. Better eat. Can't. Let me help you. Open. Open wide. That's a good girl. Jimson! Jimson! I hear a voice crying in the wilderness. I'd like your advice. Just come here a moment, will you? Just look at this, will you? Won't you come down? I'd rather not. I want to know, what does it say to you? It says to me, I'm getting smaller and smaller every day. Well, it is smaller, of course, but bigger, too, in a sense, don't you think? Tell him it's wonderful, Gully. Tell him it's not ruined. I've been in this position for six weeks. If he keeps me here much longer, I'll be stuck like this for life. That's a very selfish thing to say, Lowly. You're quite comfortable. I'm numb. Doesn't it say to you, Mother Earth, surrounded by her dead? It may say that someday, but not yet. Forgive me, Bisson. I'm not in a receptive mood. I've problems of my own. I'd be grateful if you'd uh, come up here a moment. Oh, I could do with a stretch. If I had a stretch, I'd snap. Quiet, Lowly. Rest yourself. Ah, it's getting bigger and bigger, in a sense. What do you mean, in a sense? Well, it's all filled in. Well, any fool can see that. Frankly, I don't like it. I asked you up here as a friend. I didn't ask for your pea-brained opinion. Too many feet. I don't want to hear. I'm telling you, Jimson, for your own good. Too many feet. Get out! Get out and submerge before I chuck your eyes out. It's a crackpot painting. That's what it is. Get out! Where you belong! Earth and her dead. Chop off its extremities. It'll do for a guided missile. A misguided missile. You're an old idiot. You'll be a problem before you know when. Oh. He's mad. Oh. And he's dangerous. Take a week's notice. We're going now. Drunken, insane old fool with the conceit of a devil. Me, 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 arrogant, complacent, filthy old phony! He's right. A crackpot 
painting. Not what I meant. Not the vision I had. Why doesn't it fit? <sighs> like it does in the mind. Oh, thank you, Hodges. That's fine. Well, I must say it's good to be coming home. Well, William, we've come to the wrong flat. Hmm? Oh, no, no. 6B. 6B. This is, this is us, my dear. Oh, but us. it isn't it. Great Scott. William, the wall. I can see it, my dear. Oh, oh, William! Oh, 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 Sir William, oh, you're sinking. Come back. Oh, 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 oh. Here, Coco. Home is the sailor, home to the sea, and the hunter, home from the hill. I'm not speaking to you. Well, I'm coming in out of the rain. Ah, it's as wet inside as it is out. What are you doing here? I told you once I'm not speaking to you. Why don't you listen? I am listening, Coco. What are you doing in my studio? Living here, that's what. You're welcome. Why? Because I've got nowhere else to live. Because you got my name in the paper. Because I was a mug and trusted you. Because I lost my job. Is that enough? Why, it's a little bourgeois bungalow you've made of it. Well, it's clean, that's all. But it doesn't float. And when the tide comes up, it comes in. Where have you been all these weeks? Staying with my millionaire friends. They came back today, so I moved out. I bet you're on the run again. Well, this is no place for you, let me tell you. The police are after you. Quite a nice little account they have to settle. No one saw me come here. I'll stay a bit. Where's my picture? Facing the wall. It's better like that. Here, you catch your death of cold. Get out of those things. I've nothing else to wear. Take them off and get into bed. Come on, don't stand there shivering. Do as you're told. And don't get the wrong idea. At my age? I wouldn't put it past you. Come on. Well, don't be so modest. All right, I won't look. Oh, I've never known anyone as bumptious as you be so modest. Oh, you ought to be in the workhouse. Can't put me in the workhouse. I'm a houseboat holder. Have my socks dried for me, will you? <laughs> And my trues. Heaven help us. What's this? My vest and pants. You can look now. I'm decent. I'll sleep on the floor if you like. I'm used to it. That's all talk. You ought to be in the circus with that muck on your face. 
<coughs> Just hark at that cough of yours. Oh, I've been harking to it for 30 years. 30 years or more. I started, if you like. I worked in an office, all very respectable and clerk-like I was. Then one day I saw a painting by Matisse, a reproduction. I saw it because some of the chaps were laughing at it and called me over. It gave me the shock of my life. It skinned my eyes for me. I became a different man. Like a conversion. I saw a new world. The world of color. You listening? No. What are you doing? And sang my prayers, I forgot them. I thought you hated God. Maybe I do. Why'd you pray then? Well, he's our father, isn't he? That's a funny reason. I've got things to be thankful for, haven't I? Here I call me life, face like an accident. Kicked all around the place by my auntie and uncle when I was a girl. But I've got both legs the same length and I don't squint. It's a sort of miracle. That's something to be grateful for, isn't it? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <coughs> but I'm not going to be grateful if you kick the bucket in my bed. Who'd you pray for? Me. Who else? All sorts. Me. You mind your own business. Sarah Monday. Not likely. Hickson. Why should I pray for him? He's dead. Dead. Stiff. Didn't you know? I reckon you polished him off, poor old turkey. You don't say much, do you? Your poor old friend popping off like that. Well, you don't have to worry anymore. It's all right about your pictures. I read in the paper. He's given them to the nation. I suppose you'd rather have the cash. Gully, please forgive me calling out like that. And you with all your admirers and me drawing attention to myself. It shames me. Nothing ever shamed you, Sal. It makes me blush, I tell you, to think of all these people going in to see me naked in a bath. You're going with them, I notice. I couldn't resist another peep. Not that it's your best, Gully. Oh, it's a picture all right. They all are wonderful pictures. Even if they're not what you call pretty. You've been to this exhibition before. Twice last week. I couldn't get in the week before. Mr. Mundy had a bronchial attack. It's his chest, you know. Oh, get on, get on. So, the picture of you in the bath. Ah, uh, it's not as good as mine. The one you did of me in the bed. Oh, gully. I knew you had it. That's right. Now you can see your picture every day in the gallery. You won't need yours, will you, Sal? I don't know. I'm not sure. Where'd you keep it? In your old tin trunk. Thank you. That makes things very much easier. <laughs> In your old tin trunk. 
I'm too upset to talk. Seeing you suddenly like that put me in mind of the old days when we were young. They drive you at such a speed to your grave these days. What's the matter? It's not natural, Gully. There I see that picture you painted. Me as I was 20 years ago. Then we pass a funeral. It's unlucky, Gully. It's my unlucky day. Let's have a drink on it. To tell you the truth, it's just what I want. Can you pay? I can manage, Gully. It'll mean kippers for Mr. Mandy tonight instead of a nice pork chop. You may laugh, Gully, but ever since I was a chit of a girl, I've always dreamt of a real posh funeral. I don't want to be taken through the streets quickly like. The blinds drawn and no flowers. Take me home and give me the picture and there'll be enough for six funerals. If I can throw in your portrait, Sal, the beaters will stump up 7,000. You and I can go 50-50. Uh, hmm, I just want enough for a nice funeral and a proper stone. You let me have the picture and uh, when the time comes, you can buy yourself an oak coffin and a stone uh, six foot high. Oh, golly. God bless you. You don't throw a woman's weakness in her face. You know how God made us. That's the funny thing about you. You know about women. When it comes to a wife, give me a woman every time. Pity we broke it up, Sal. Same again. Do you think we ought? Oh. The king, he said to me, you are a marvel. And singing, you have really got the neck. Then from his tie, he took the diamond scarf pin. He smiled at me, and then he put it back. <laughs> La di da di di, la di da di di. Then from his side he took a diamond soft pin. He smiled at me and then he put it back. Come on, Sal. It always did make me laugh that song, that wicked old king. Wrap it up, and I'll be on my way. I don't know, I'm sure. I hate to part with it. Think of that stone, Aberdeen granite. Here lies, made model, cook wife, and a true friend. In nice, clean, chiseled lettering. Now that you're such a success, Gully, I should think you could ask almost any price you want. What will you do with all the money? I ginger moustaches. I just want room to expand. I've learned a lot the last few weeks. I have a new vision. Something quite different. Why don't you get yourself a proper job, a big boy like you? Where would it get you being artistic? A bit on the embankment at best, more like a spell in the cooler. Look out, please. Is that you, Melba? <laughs> no, it's you. I thought it was someone respectable like the inspector from Scotland Yard. Here, where you been? You gave us the slip. Never mind where I've been. Look, what I've got. What is it? A new chimney? We could do with one. You wait and see. I'm on my way to the beaters. But I wanted Nosy to have a look at this before it's put in its golden frame. Oh, uh, 8,000 I get for this in Bond Street. That quality, Fulton Siege. Poor Mr. Chimps. Done in the eye by your girlfriend again, I suppose. We'll serve you right for taking up with such people. I'll do her properly this time. Look, you haven't even got a larder to keep them in. Well, don't stand there snivelling. Run after the old boy and see he doesn't get into any more mischief. <laughs> Gully! You didn't expect me 
back so soon, did you? Go away. I'll call the police. You wicked old windbag. Oh. Give me my picture. No way. Give me my No, Mr. Jimson. Come out of there. Open the door, Mrs. Monday. Jimson, this way. It wasn't your fault, Mrs. Jimson. She slipped. Mrs. Mundy, are you all right? She's only knocked herself out. Quick, Mrs. Jimson, before they get in. It's mine, golly. It's mine. God help me, I could have killed her. Let me in. Quick, Mr. Jimson, this way. to a scheming cook general. Or you'll end on the gallows. We can't spend the night here. I like it here. Bricks and broken glass. And an old garbage can. It's the story of my life. I can hear a cack, cack. Oh, hell. I told you I could hear a black cat. Citizen. She likes it here. It's a palace, she says, fit for the queen. Mr. Jimson, come here. To move. I'm broody. Please. Supervising my apprentices. 
Uh, what's your name, dear? Oh, speak up. You'll never make good if you mumble. Sybil! That's better. Let the world know who you are, the great Sybil. Uh, well, you take C2, snout of the whale. And nothing niggly, mind you. Let me hear the paint going on. Call yourself an artist. What do you mean, not painting? There's not time, Cokie. It's a race against the demolition boys. Once my design's on that wall, they won't dare touch it. A British painting of unparalleled magnitude. Excuse me, Mr. Yes? Jimmons. C2 appears to be occupied. There's some mistake somewhere. Hey, you! Fatty! You're fooling around in the wrong square! <gasps> oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Jimson. Oh, well, it's so confusing up here. It could happen to anyone here. All the greatest artists got their squares wrong. Numbers were invented by Arabs who hate art. You'll have to lower Madge. Half a pint of Viridian. Uh, you two, give him a hand with Madge. Go on, stir it. You've never seen your mum beating up eggs? Or is your house all modern machine? Oh, oh don't, man! Hi, Madge. We heard that there were painting lessons from Gally Jimson. That's right, sixpence an hour. He's paying for the three of us. Where do we go and what do we do? Oh, give Ann over there with Madge. Oh, dear baby, why is it mine? Oh! Oh, look who's here. Dr. Livingstone, I presume. You've been warned. Are you a hot gospeler? You know who I am. And your face escapes me. I'm clerk to the Borough Surveyor. Oh! I've told you 20 times in the last 10 days. Oh! Oh! Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 uh, when you finish that, you can start on the dam. D, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, oh, we may need tigers and We've orchids, run out of fly catchers and flesh eaters, flowers of evil, or a borough councillor eating a baby for breakfast. We We've run out of cobalt blue. Well, go and get some. Ask Cookie for the money. We've run out of blue already, Miss Coker. I'll want two quid. But well, don't be silly. This lot costs 30 bob. We've got to have it. There's only 12 and 4 in the kitty. Oh, look at that one chip. Right, that goes back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm saying, I'm trying to Make her eyes hard, Elspeth. Steely, like ball bearings. Can I speak to you in private? I'm all ears. We've only 12 and 4 left. 12 and 4 Well, give me the 4 uh, uh, Let me have the coppers, Cookie. For the telephone. I want to make a small investment. Thank you. Keep the colour clean, keep it balanced, and enjoy yourself. Well, all I want to know is, will it peel off? I don't care to spend the rest of my life with all those totters. It's a national monument, Sir William. Yes? Well, if you fellows say so, I suppose it is. Uh, who shall I say? But a national monument in the park is one thing, and a national monument in your I home beg your is pardon? another. You wouldn't want to live with the Albert Memorial in your room now, would you? Arnold, please, who is it for? Do try to smile. I gather it's for you, Lady Beda. You know, William, I'm inclined to agree with Lord Stanwood that it would be sacrilege to attempt to move it. Who is it, Arnold? The Duchess of Blackpool. Hmm? This is Flora Beda speaking. Who is it, please? The Duchess of Blackpool. Who? 7,000 pounds in my debt, and I don't suppose I'll ever see a penny yes, of it. And what am I left with? Hmm? Feet, I don't want. Uh, can I get you a glass of sherry? Where uh, far away thank you. is that? No, I... I don't know that part of London at all. Oh, bring a checkbook. I can honestly say I'm the last I person in the world to harbour thoughts of revenge. Thank you. But I would like to cut Mr. Jimson's head off with a meat axe. Here, here. Oh, it does sound rather fun. Oh, but my arm. A Renoir painted with one arm. Oh, I see. Renoir did, did he? Yes, Mr. Jimson, I understand. Slap it on. No Dorset sunsets. Yes, I think I can manage that. All you've got to do is paint the giraffe's eye. The giraffe's eye? Yes. 
innocent, velvety, river brown. That's the idea. You've got your whale upside down. <laughs> but Mr. Jimpson, surely a whale doesn't have its eye under its jaw, does it? None of your sarcasm now. My whales do, otherwise they wouldn't be real. They'd just be pictures out of a whale book. Shall I try and reverse it? Not now, it's too late. No, 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 Flo. Learn when to leave well alone. You mean it's finished? Finished. Three cheers for Mr. Jimson. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hooray! The Philistines are upon us. Let them be. And remember, girls, no roughhousing. It's all yours. Right, come on, get them trestles down. If I paint a wall, it's as good as asking you to catch fire or be struck by lightning. I had hoped that this would take an earthquake or a world war. I hadn't reckoned on a butter council and demolition. It's blasphemous, and it's obscene. Oh. Obscene, but I'm bashing the first bloke what touches it. I warned him two weeks ago, Sir William, and I first got wind of it. This chapel's got to come down. Butter surveyor's orders. Now clear away, please. Come on, everybody, everybody, come on. Bert, the bulldozer. Rotten baskets. She's coming down in 15 seconds from now. It's not my responsibility, I assure you. Oi, Bert, come on, get started. Everyone okay? <coughs> I'd know that cough anywhere. <coughs> I had to do it, Koki. Too much responsibility for those chaps. Destroying the National Monument. I've got a few bits and pieces to collect, then I'll be on my way to fresh woods and pastures new. Where? I need a new horizon. Hey, you. Come here. Yes, you in the pinstripe.
Away with the fleet. There's a river mist blowing up. It's not a trip I'd like to be making. Oh, you know. 